started because it's 701. So let's call to order our regular meeting. Um, first, are there any requests no. to remove items no. from the consent agenda for discussion? Nothing. Nothing. A, 7 A and B. 7 A and B. Write <laughs> so that down. Oh, no. I need your okay. tattoos. <laughs> Oh, 7 a. Oh, okay, great. I also have something from 7 a to talk about, so we'll pull that out. And um, can I have a motion to approve the order of items for the regular and consent agenda? So, so moved. Second. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Well, um, let me just briefly say that it is so fun to be here tonight because we are having our um, summer reading kickoff. Uh, it's great to see so many families here and all the different stations of activities around the library, the food trucks out in the parking lot, and just people having a good time enjoying our space and um, everything we have here. Um, I will uh, also let you all know that earlier today I officially hit 50 books. Ooh. Hey. So, um, and gift. because wow. I had signed up Seriously? for the, um, for the, book, the, yes, yeah. the 50 it's book challenge, so I get a prize. Ah. What did you get? Special prize. I think it's a gift card to Schuler Books. Maybe? Oh. Anyway, very, yes. <laughs> a collective yes. Yeah. <laughs> very exciting. And, um, because I had already signed up this morning for the summer Sorry. reading challenge, that 50th book counted as my mm -hmm. first, first book. book. Wow. You are so I'm double just, oh my but gosh. lottery <laughs> time. <laughs> they did say last week that it, they yes, will. Yes, that's right. It was totally yes. legit. Yes. So, um, <laughs> we're not your confessional. So, great. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we are already off to a good, great good. start. Yes, well, um, you are. And so it's just an exciting night to be And what here. is your mental goal for the summer? How many books would you like to read, oh, gosh. Danny? Come on. Well, it depends on um, just how much camp my kids will go to. Mm. <laughs> the out of all the, the okay. house. Yeah, all the camp. <laughs> um, so I'm not sure, right. but I know that there... I Actually, I took the list of... Um, of books that were like coming out this summer and placed holds on so oh, good. many things. Okay. So hopefully they'll all just right. they'll just keep coming. Up. Okay. Um, but that's all I wanted to good. say was just that it's exciting to be like here. Harry Potter, they're just going to come flying yeah. on yeah. the shelf. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, I too want to recognize that it's summer reading kickoff night, and this time of year always feels extra buzzy because lots of play and heat and warmth uh -huh. and um, all the people who are in the library tonight celebrating the kickoff of summer reading. I'm always amazed at how creative the librarians are. Yes. And this year, they really put in a lot of extra work planning uh, so we didn't have the police visit us. <laughs> <laughs> They've arranged for extra parking across the street at Cross of Christ Church, which we thank the church for allowing us to do that. We borrowed the shuttle van from the senior center, and that's been shuttling people. Oh, there's Laura talking about the shuttle right now. Um, we've got extra staff stationed across the street and in the parking lot and in the lobby and then throughout the library. So it's just a very, very well-run, organized event tonight. And it's a labor of love because mm -hmm. it's a lot of work. So. And I saw some of the lawn placards. You know, they're made from the library cards, of course. Yeah. You know, the one, they're so beautiful. The floral one, that's the one I picked. That's so, yeah. 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 I do like seeing people yeah. walking around. They were. I ran into a neighbor here uh -huh. tonight, and um, I, this was, I, I, know, I knew his wife, and so I was saying, oh, I'm telling him that I'm a neighbor, and I was describing where I live, and he says, oh, do you have the library sign out front? That's great. That's me. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> Uh, well, I'm also proud of the displays that staff have created this month and every month. I think the staff are always creating really great displays. Um, but especially this month, uh, we have a pride display in the youth department, and I'm glad that we're helping to lift marginalized voices, which is one of the things that we do with displays um, and having books of different lived experiences and authors. So again, another thing that 
speaks to staff's creativity and effort at pulling all those displays and bibs together. And on kind of a more prosaic, boring note, um, we're, <laughs> we're updating the look of the circulation notices that you receive. Um, I know none of you have ever received an overdue notice, nor will you ever receive one. But I know you're going to get lots of holds notices and due date notices. Um, we're changing those. We're using a new piece of software that helps us add some graphics and make them look a little bit more visually appealing. And we can also add promotional items too. So we can, if there's a big event like this or an evergreen service or um, product we want to promote to people, we can do that with this. Sounds like a great idea. So how about threats? Out for that. What'd you say? How about threats? Threats. Dear Judy. <laughs> They're going to turn into the dice. There will be a special section. <laughs> and that's all I have to report. Thank you. Uh, okay, may I have a motion to approve the remaining consent ag agenda items? So moved. I have a second. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, well, moving right along, we it's time for our call to the public. And um, oh, I forgot to write down again. That Tom's here. Tom, yeah. I noticed that Tom is here. <laughs> Tom from Facilities is here as the uh, yeah. SOC oh, rep, yeah. and it's his first yeah. time yeah. visiting us Welcome. to talk about SOC. Yeah. So um, Drew actually just started uh, summer reading for employees um, last week, which will run until the last week of August. Um, Next week, we'll be putting our, our notice to the employees for our, all of our July events, which is casual casual month. And we're also going to do a spirit week, which we're going to have five different dress themes for oh, that week. That's great. Um, mm -hmm. So everybody's kind of looking forward to that, yeah. at least in our group. Yeah. And that's really it, what we're doing right now. We're going to, we've got some other events we're going to plan later on um, after summer reading is finished. We're trying to look up. Summer reading work its way through. For gotcha. Right now. So you're going in your closet to get your spirit week things. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sure. It's fun. <laughs> Good. I, we're going to come and just look mm -hmm. at you. Yeah. It'll be fun to see pictures of everybody. It will be. Yes. Yeah. That's great. Thank you so much. Yep, Thanks no for being problem. here. Um, okay. Well, we'll move on to unfinished business. And we really don't have any, but this is where we were discussing our bylaws. Mm -hmm. But we've made our way through the bylaws mm -hmm. so far. So we will move along to new business. And we have a strategic plan update. Yeah, so um, we're about halfway through a three year strategic plan. Oh, I know. What? Yeah, I know. Was 23 to 25. Yeah. So we're about halfway through. <laughs> um, <laughs> it is hard to believe. Right. So I thought it would be a good time for Catherine to share an update of all the things that we've done, all the things that we're looking forward to. And so I'm going to turn it over to Catherine now. And she's going to walk you through this. There's nothing in the packet. Oh, there's, there's, no, say, there's nothing in the packet except for a memo. It's all going to be okay, just, just listening memo. to me. All, all right. right. Hey, Catherine. Okay. Should we focus on you or the screen? Or the screen. Wherever you want. We're, we're going back to the <laughs> Yes. Like a so tennis match. Yeah, tennis match. Yeah. Um, yeah, so as Tara said, this is our midway point, 2023 to 2025. We're right here in the middle of 2024. Um, so we want to talk about what we have already accomplished in that time and what is still in the works. So as you know, um, we selected three overarching goals for the strategic plan um, to enhance our core, connect the community, and build organizational capacity. Within each of those overarching uh, themes are three distinct goals for a total of nine goals altogether. So in spring of last year, our management advisory group selected three goals of those nine to really concentrate and hone in on over the year ahead. Those were these three goals. Um, Reimagine use of library spaces for increased inclusion and flexibility update recruiting, hiring, onboarding, and retention practices using a DEI lens, and cultivate a collaborative culture by focusing on how we work together. So we decided to form a committee for each one of these goals. And at our staff development day in May of 2023, all staff worked together to contribute ideas on how to achieve or move closer to achieving these three goals. Um, staff also volunteered that day to serve on committees for these goals. 
So these three committees were led by department heads and assistant department heads, and they were comprised of staff from various departments and positions. Um, this was really important because staff have expertise in their various areas and have insight to share, whether they're here 10 hours a week as a library page, or they're in a leadership position, or if they've been a librarian here for 20 plus years. Um, we really believe everybody has valuable insight to contribute, and these committees helped everybody have their voice heard. Um, so I'm going to dive a little bit deep into what each of the committees did. The Inclusive Spaces Committee was led by Brooke Haskins and Lauren Catoni Alice. They are each assistant department heads, youth services, and adult and teen services. On that committee included Mary Minor, Tom, who is here with us this evening, Emily Benoit, Andy Cascarelli, Krista Gregory, Lori smith hugasian and Rebecca Tauber. So this committee spent a lot of time observing library spaces, noticing what is working and what needs improvement. Um, Tara and I worked with interior designer Jenna Walker to create and present a pre-design and research report for library renovations. Jenna presented this report to you all in fall of 2023, but then we put the project on hold until after the millage renewal vote. Um, during that pause, Jenna moved to a different architecture firm and is now preparing a proposal for the design. Um, we moved ahead with a few smaller projects in the meantime. One of those was a wellness room for staff. We turned an old storage room that had been used as a recording studio for staff into a comfortable lactation and wellness room. Nursing staff have priority to use this space, but any staff member can use it if they need a place to just take a few deep breaths and center themselves if they're having a difficult day. It also remains a recording studio for virtual programming. So this is a truly flexible space that we have in our building. Um, in the early childhood area in youth services. Yeah. That, that's the lactation room for staff. Yes. That's the like the that's where everyone has to go. Yes. So clearly those people get priority. Is yes. there some awkwardness when like how do we know if we have somebody who's in that has a need for that room? How do we like she shouldn't have to knock on the door and make people leave? Is there some there's not currently like a sign up system, but as far as I know, there has not been any trouble with accessing the space as needed. We had yeah. an occupancy uh, no. indicator installed on the door too, so she can, oh, it's, I, it's designated as occupied. We're doing very few virtual programs at this point, yeah. so the recording studio aspect of the space is not in high demand. Um, we might need to put up some sort of system for reserving the space if we were to go back to more virtual programming. Um, and right now, as far as I know, there's only one staff member who uses the room as a lactation room. So um, it's pretty open. Maybe we just check in with her and make sure she's comfortable with the way it's working. Absolutely. Good, good suggestion. Uh, in the early childhood area in youth services, we have added comfortable armchairs, whereas before parents were sitting on the floor, which works fine for some people. Other caregivers uh, need a more comfortable space to sit. Uh, we've added a train table uh, for kids to play with, as well as a play kitchen, which encourages open-ended imaginative play. Um, that's really made that space even busier than it was before. I didn't think it was possible, but um, children and parents alike really enjoy using that area. We also implemented a new study room reservation system that we told you about last fall, where people can reserve a study room online using their library card. They then receive a code. They can just get access into the room themselves. People can reserve up to two hours up to twice a day for a total maximum time of up to four hours. And this makes the space more inclusive because we no longer have people who can really like set up camp for the whole day. It allows more people the opportunity to access the rooms and to plan ahead for that time slot that they really need. Is it operating pretty well? Yes, very well. You know, a little bit of a learning curve yeah. anytime you implement a new system, but overall people seem very positive about it. So coming up next um, for inclusive spaces, the committee 
uh, wants us to prioritize replacing the reddish orangish chairs throughout adult and teen services which are um, past their prime and not very comfortable uh, they want us to they recommend removing unused shelving and redesigning the underutilized spaces around the library much of this uh, will be addressed in the renovation plans that are forthcoming so the HR Practices Committee, uh, co-chaired by Laura Crayley and Jen Taggart, Department Heads for Adult and Teen and Youth Services, respectively. Um, that committee included Elizabeth Corey, Heather Coffey borden Drew Huser, Monica Gower, Killian Weston, and Lyndon. Um, one of, they had two main recommendations to make after meeting and discussing the ins and outs of our HR practices. Um, one of those was to recommend conducting a compensation and classification study. This committee, um, particularly Lyndon and Monica, really planned much of the RFP, writing the language and researching firms to send that uh, RFP to. And last month, you all approved um, GovHR or MGT to assist us with that project, which will be kicking off next week. Mm -hmm. Um, this group, I believe, also had input into changing two intern positions to library assistant positions to better meet the needs mm -hmm. of the library and in response to poor um, application, poor numbers of applications for the intern position. And then we did get, when we yeah. changed that, it was oh, like 50. 50. Yeah. yeah, that was, that was, it was a lot. amazing. Yeah. It was a lot, yes, it was wonderful. We, we had a wonderful pool of candidates to choose from. The framework. So we went to mm -hmm. Schuler's and we went to places like that. So I believe so. Yeah, that was great. Mm -hmm. um, and we have two great people in those positions. Okay. Good. Yeah. Um, coming up next, we will be conducting that comp and class study over the next several months. Implement Bamboo HR, as you have heard about. Um, and then the committee also recommends updating our hiring process um, from the application phase, including creating an online application process, which Bamboo HR will facilitate for us, um, updating our application to remove some repetitive or unnecessary information, uh, including more information about the hiring timeline in the job posting so applicants know better what to expect and updating our clerical skills test, which uh, is required for some positions in the library, and also updating our resume rating and interview process um, to evaluate whether the items that we're asking for throughout the hiring process are really indicative of uh, if the person will be good at the job or good on paper. So some things that they wanna look at is evaluating the rating system, ensuring consistency in ratings across departments, um, and evaluating how we balance soft skills with core qualifications. And then reviewing all of our HR practices for EDI best practices. And then finally, we have the Collaborative Culture Committee, co-chaired by Materials Services Assistant Department Head Deb Smith, and then IT Department Head Paul Zink. They have implemented monthly department tours as part of our regular training schedule, whereas each department takes a turn every month hosting a tour of their department and talking about the people that work there and what work they do and sometimes really doing a deep dive into a particular aspect of that department's work. So for instance, this month circulation hosted a department tour and talked all about the MELCAT system, mm -hmm. which was very interesting to learn more about. Um, and this allows staff to learn more about what other departments do and really kind of break down the walls that can build up between departments in an organization. Collaborative Culture Committee also um, helped to encourage staff to take the TLM, that's the Library Network Workplace Perception Survey. They do have some projects that they are recommending we move forward on, including a culture card where we really spell out what this library's culture is and create a small card that staff can keep in their wallets, um, reminding them of the values of this library. Creating a, an employee job satisfaction survey 
creating um, a formal process for job shadowing if somebody has interest in a position, uh, particularly in another department or another level, how they can learn more about what that job entails, and also implementing some sort of mechanism to provide anonymous feedback if needed. So, well, um, is there not something currently for anonymous feedback? Yeah, or there is not. oh, okay. Yeah, nothing super formal. Uh -huh. So I mean, other than yeah, like a typed out sheet of paper slipped into somebody's <laughs> mailbox. Yeah, we don't have everything's kind of tied to your email. Right. Even when you use our intranet, you are logged in through your email account. So we're not sure exactly what this will look like, but we want to make sure that staff always feel safe to provide yes. feedback sort of as needed. Suggestion box. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. This is great. And then I don't want to, um, you know, do any spoilers because next month you all get me to talk about the annual report and much mm -hmm. of this is included in there, but we do have some additional accomplishments even outside of those goals that we chose to focus on this year. You can see them up there. I will talk about them more next month, um, but these all moved us closer to achieving all of the different strategic plan goals that we set for ourselves um, a year and a half ago. That's a lot. Mm -hmm. It is. It is. Yeah. Congratulations. Yes. Thank you. Do you have any questions? All right. This well, thank great. you so thank much. You. Yes. Thank you. You all helped with many of those, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I can't believe the yeah. to think that we're halfway through. I know. That's just yeah. crazy. Time flies. Well, thank you. Thank you very much, Catherine, mm -hmm. for that presentation. Now we will move on to discussing the roof repair, phase two. Roof repair. There is um, a memo in our packet, and um, I believe there. I don't think there's a motion. Is there a motion? There. Uh, I don't see one. What is it for now? There should, there should be. Oh, yes, there, there is. is. There is. Page, uh, the bottom of page 32. Oh, but the memo one. begins on page 31 of our packet. Um, well, let me just, uh, for the benefit of the, the public and the record, I'll, I'll summarize um, what's going on with this project. Uh, so last fall, Artisan Building Services um, did some work on our roof to re-adhere the rubber membrane to the existing gravel stock, which is a metal edging that goes around the perimeter of the entire roof. Um, they also installed some test strips of three different kinds of material, and we're calling those the good, better, best uh, scenario. So the good material was a, a reinforcing tape, the better one was a stronger reinforcing tape, and the best option identified was to install a brand new gravel stop on top of the old gravel stop and then install that better tape to that to create a nice seal. Um, so those three things were done and as winter passed, uh, the three options were considered by facilities, Hugo, Tom, uh, Chris Schlaps, who's been working with us from Rewild and Artisan. Um, we all decided that option, that to eliminate the good, option and go with the better or the best. So Chris worked on getting quotes for, we called it option one and option two, which was the cover tape, and then option two was the new gravel stop and the cover tape. While Chris was working on that, we were approached, or he was approached by a new SECA representative who wanted to work on this project and offered to um, provide the SECA membrane material that would be needed at no cost um, if it was, if the bid was given to a firm that was a SICA approved installer, and also if they used the technical specs that, that were provided by SICA. So Chris <coughs> ended up getting a total of different, six different quotes from five different firms. Four of those firms quoted the original two options, option one and two, and then two of, two firms quoted the SICA approved option and our SICA approved bidders. Um, and I included the chart in this packet so you could study that. Um, you can see though that even with SICA providing the material at no cost, the SICA approved option is significantly more expensive um, than just going with um, option one or option two 
The downside of that is that we will be, at least that perimeter area will be outside of the SIGO warranty and it would just have a standard one year warranty. But um, I've been advised by Hugo and Tom and Chris and Artisan that repairs are unlikely to be needed in the future, especially if we go with option two. So um, it's kind of a, a risk assessment equation here, deciding whether we wanna pay all that extra money so we can be under that, the rest of that warranty, the life of that warranty, or save some money right now and um, maybe have to pay a repair or two in the future. Artisan is offering an annual roof maintenance agreement for just over $4,000. Um, so facilities and Chris and I feel that the best option forward is option two, which is to install the new gravel stop on top of the old one, that extra tape, and to have Artisan Building Services do that work um, because they have done it already. They know our roof, they know our building, we know them. They did a great job the first time around. Um, and we would feel confident that they would do a great job on this. Um, because this is, expenditure is over $25,000, our purchasing policy says that the board has to approve this work without um, going out to an RFP. And so that is the option on the table that I um, ask for your approval of tonight. And let it be known that the buildings and grumps committee did meet about this and um, discussed at length the different um, options mm -hmm. and um, had the uh, not only discuss it but ask many questions and so um, and have a, a good understanding of this right. mm -hmm. project there is a um, an, uh, an action item a, a motion here on page 32 do you have that? Sure. Up? Would you read that for us? I move to award the contract for roof repair phase two to Artisan Building Company, 4916 Lower Drive, Waterford, Michigan, 48329, to perform the repair referred to above as option two. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is there a second? second? Thank you very much, Shane. And all in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Thank you. Thank you so much. I will tell Hugo and we'll contact Chris and we'll get that. Do okay. they know when that process will start? No. Okay. No, we'll have to reach out to Artisan. It'll be 2024. Oh, yes. Okay. It'll be before fall. Oh, okay. They say that the work won't take that long once they get started, so it'll just be a matter of getting on their okay. schedule. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Thank you. That's great. Mm -hmm. um, and we will move right along to page 33 in our uh, board packet to discuss a um, liquor license mm -hmm. resolution. Yeah, so I'll recap this for you too. Um, so as you all know, this year the library celebrates its 60th anniversary. The development committee met early on this year um, to start talking about having a celebration for our 60th anniversary. Um, and we created a little subcommittee that's been working through some possibilities. We have a theme, um, we have a caterer selected, we have some details in the works. The event is to be held on Saturday, October 5th in the afternoon. and. Um, we expressed a desire to make the theme of the event um, an all ages, community wide event with broad appeal for all age groups. Um, and we also decided at that time that we wanted alcohol to be part of the celebration. We've had alcohol part of celebrations um, for the 50th anniversary in 2014 and the International Night at the Library in 2018. Um, in order to serve alcohol, we need a one-day liquor license granted by the state of Michigan and Bloomfield Township. Um, in the past, it was my understanding that a 501c3 organization was the only organization who could apply for such a liquor license, and we had worked with the Friends to do that. Um, but the Friends declined to do so for this celebration, um, citing concerns about the impropriety of it, possible mm -hmm. impropriety. So the library will apply in its own right, and we can apply for that as a municipality. Um, so uh, there's a big application that we have to fill out, many, many boxes to check. One of the elements needed is an app for the application is a resolution um, from the applicant organization, which would be you all. Um, and then I'll, there's a form that I'll have to fill out after tonight's meeting, um, and that'll be part of the application packet. So I would need a resolution from you all 
And there is an action on page 33 in order to make that happen. Does anybody have that right in front of them that they want to read? I do, yeah. Okay. I move to, oh, that's the wrong one. <laughs> I move to recommend that a one-day liquor license be approved for Bloomfield Township Public Library's 60th anniversary celebration to take place Saturday, October 5th, 2024. Thank you. And a second. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. I will continue working through that process. Did, you, out those did you guys see page 40, like you can donate wine? You have to list everybody who's donating wine. We'll just buy it. <laughs> <laughs> the friends gave us $10,000 for this, so we will just buy it. We spent all of it on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That'd be a good part. Great event. <laughs> Great. Thank you so much. Um, okay. Well, now it is time to discuss items removed from the consent agenda. And um, Shane, you mentioned 7A, 7A <laughs> and B. Joan, do you want to go first? You want me to go? Um, yours will probably cover mine. I was just <laughs> interested in having Tara review um, any variants that's on the page. On page 16. Oh, wait, maybe I'm on the, the highlights? Mm -hmm. Oh, the budget page, you mean? Yeah. Oh, sure. Mm -hmm. um, let me look at this. So the parts that are red, is that what you're interested mm -hmm. in? Yeah. So, um, well, tax, so starting with revenues, the taxes and penal fines, we just haven't received them yet. They come later. Um, miscellaneous, um, you know, most of those are zeroed out. We just haven't gotten a lot of revenue in those areas yet. Um, what is the one? Uh, the cafe's down a little bit. The rebates and self, um, refunds, rebates for the self-insurance, that comes later in the year. So that was just a little lagging. It's a small amount of our budget anyway. So we're down in revenues, but this is normal. This is how we operate. It all comes later in the year. Um, in the uh, expenditure side, our personnel item is, so I should have said that we're two months through a year, which is 16.66% through the year. So that's the, the gauge that we're using for this. So the personnel is at almost 20%, which is a little bit high, but we're still working our way off a very large payment we had to make at the very beginning of the year for our pensions, which took up 38% of that, that chunk of budget. So I, I believe that will even out as the year goes on. Library services is right on track. Facilities and equipment is a little high too, but we've had to pay for mulch, we had to pay for our building insurance. So those expenditures have been a little bit higher at the beginning of the year. And then other is really low because that's where the projects line feeds into. Um, and the projects is $2.1 million. And we've only spent 70% of the, or $70,000 there. So that's why that one is, is quite low. But overall, our expenditures are right on track, 15.90%. Uh, Can you look at the one uh, expenditure personnel retirement? So we're 16% we're through the year. We've spent 38% of our retirement estimate for the year is there anything is it is there timing yeah we had to pay that i think it was the very first year of the our first month of the fiscal year we had to pay that payment and i don't really know what the pattern of the timing is okay. i never paid attention that's why this is so beneficial because mm -hmm. now i'm paying attention to that is that to the township yes their fiscal year is the same as ours yes okay. yeah yeah we probably had to do that too. confusing yeah the questions I had on page eleven. Yes. You've got the check. It's we paid five forty five hundred for the printing of ballots for the millage. But that was my question. That, too. Wasn't the millage on the general ballot? Yeah. So um, Martin had assured me that we wouldn't have to pay for this election when we decided to do it in February because it's the presidential primary. He was not aware even that there would be this expenditure. But Oakland County had to print special ballots for Bloomfield Township because we had that question about the library millage. So they were already printing ballots with the presidential primary, but for us, they had to print special ones with our millage question, and that cost four grand. Okay. Different from the rest yeah, exactly. of the municipalities. If he says so. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. uh, on the next page, what is Orange Boy? It is a firm, 
It's a library vending firm, and they are the ones who provide our email newsletter. Um, what am I trying to say? Marketing software. It says email marketing platform. So what does that platform do? You want to talk about that? Sure. So that's where we send our monthly Discover email newsletter from, it, uh, as well as all of our sort of sub-newsletters that get sent out. It also tracks... So it, it connects with our library card database. So we collect everybody's email addresses through that as they sign up for library cards. It tracks open rates, engagement, kind of classifies people based on how they use the library. So if you're reading primarily on your Kindle, then we're gonna send you information about new oh, eBooks nice. that are out. If you're checking out a whole bunch of kids' books, we're gonna send you information about our youth services programs. So it does a little bit more than just sending emails. It kind of does a market study for us as well. Okay, so I'll be getting a lot of young adults. Yes. Right. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's great. Uh, on page 13, we, this is a piano. Do we have a piano? We do. Yes. We have a I'm baby sure grand piano right? in Where the community it? room. Huh. Yeah. But the tuning is that every single time that it goes up onto the stage. Because we right? have to move it. We first have to pay for somebody to move it up onto the stage, and then we bring in a tuner, and then it gets moved back to another place. Thank you. Yeah. I figured there was a logical answer. And uh, the flying locksmith, I know that I've seen them a hundred times, mm -hmm. but if we pay them every month, it seems like. So this month they did a project uh, for us where they rekeyed um, almost the, every door in the building so that facilities has one master key. Okay. That wasn't done with the, the yeah. new electronic? No, it was outside of the scope of that project. So we had put this in the CIP, um, the capital improvements projects. And this is a physical key? Mm -hmm. it's, it's, I mean, facilities is it all the time for rooms that don't have door or the card access. But this uh, is really important in case the power goes out. Right. We can't get any in anywhere because the system doesn't work. So they'll have that. Yeah. Did they change? Do you have to get new cards? Everyone had to get a no, new cards? No, we were able to use the old oh, that's good. cards. Oh, that's yeah. good. Okay. Uh, my last one was on page 25. We've got, we're looking at the Hoopla access, which it says BTL mobile new devices 78, BTL mobile launches 2185. What is that? New devices are the number of like new downloads downloading for that month, app. downloading the app. So it has nothing to, the lines on, the lines make it unclear. So BTPL oh, yeah. mobile is our mobile app. So new devices is the number of people who have just downloaded our app and launches are the number of times that app has been opened across all devices for that month. So we had 78 new people so if get... I, if I open it three times, is that one or is that three? That's three. Oh yeah. Okay. So if you're checking your mobile app every day to see if you've got books due, <laughs> or to look at the covers so you can find them like doing, I do. Or see if it's available. To, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or see if something's books. available. Yeah. Yep. Are all 2,000 of those you, Shane? I'm uh -huh. a significant number. I'm certainly... Uh, and then is this... Because it was NA in 2023, this, is this total? So we, if we no, only this is just for last month. We don't have an annual total oh, for that. Okay, good. I was yeah. going to say or 78 would not be a great... Yeah. Yeah. No, that was 78 year. just in the month of May. Any other questions? Did you have anything else, John? Um, I just wanted to um, bring up the scanners. There was the um, item, it was about $700 for uh, scanners. And um, Tara, they are, they were for outreach events. Yes, Circulation wanted to create a kit that would have equipment that they could use to uh, create a library card account. Okay. And they wanted to create Outside this of the kit library. to take it with them to mm -hmm. other events, yeah. This was actually, so you'll see you'll see this next month. This was supposed to come out of the gift fund, but it didn't get coded correctly, and I didn't realize it until I was going through this process. It was gotcha. too late to avoid it. So we'll refund the general fund from the gift fund next month. So... If they have like a table at Trader Joe's and they have yep. a card, they're going to use that. You got it. Yeah, yeah. Idea. Oh, right. Or if 
there's a visit to a School. senior living mm -hmm. facility mm -hmm. or something. And the so Bloomfield Township Open House coming up in mm -hmm. a couple of weeks. And I, you good. know, it's just one more way to make our sure. library accessible, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. especially to people who can't come into the physical mm -hmm. library, but can mm -hmm. still use our online resources. So, um, or even better, those places people didn't even know that they could get a library card. Exactly. Yeah. Right. You know, we still have people who don't realize that. So, yeah. Yeah, and you know, speaking of you know going to the Trader Joe's or whatever, mm -hmm. people also don't know that um, anybody who works in the Correct. township is eligible yes, for a absolutely. library card. Mm -hmm. um, so I just you know I wanted to call that out because I I think it's great that it's just one more way mm -hmm. to make our our library and our services accessible mm -hmm. to our community um, and that was all that I had does anybody else have anything else that they want to discuss from the consent agenda if not then can I please have a motion to approve the items removed from the consent agenda so moved thank you second. second and all in favor Aye. Aye. wonderful uh, well now it is time to move on to other does anybody have anything? I was thrilled. Oh. I'm surprised you got this before. I don't think Cranbrook has this yet. So. Oh. Yeah, that's okay. what I'm saying. So he was a master. <coughs> yeah. yeah, that's exciting. Yeah, it is exciting. I love the flyer, too. I do, too. I love the color. It matches it. Ooh. Pretty gloves. I was very excited about that. And I saw the urns were planted. Yes, mm -hmm. just today. Yes. All that work happened today. I just know. To oh, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Very, very nice. Um. Mm -hmm. So there were, I uh, can't find it exactly, there There was some discussion, um, I, Catherine, I think it was in your section, marketing about um, inclusion, and I wanted to add that we also have added some inclusion in terms of the elderly, mm -hmm. because we're going to get the motorized they're there. Um, yes. Wheelchairs yep. that work. Yep. We yep. have them, yes. 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 Well, we have them now? Oh, yep. yes. Oh, great. Yeah. Okay, yeah. they're already there. Yeah. So that was just one other thing I thought of. Yes. Yeah. 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 I liked yeah. that you um, advertise that on social media um, because it's not just the motorized chairs. You right. mentioned walkers mm -hmm. and some other, oh, okay. other yeah. aspects okay. too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was good and, to see. And, um, also, Catherine, that was all a great section. I love that marketing section. And um, the Library of Things, I'm so glad you uh -huh. um, included that. That was, um, that, was mm -hmm. that was really fun. We were really fortunate. The reporter reached out to the library and just yeah. asked, do you have a Library of Things? Would you talk about it? Right. And, it, yes. and we have... Thanks. We have some that we may not have guitars, but we have other things. So I love the fishing poles. Yeah, 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 that was um, really great. So Thank thanks you. for um, including all those great things. Thank you. Does anybody have any other other? Just a couple of things for me. The, given that the temperatures are soaring, yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's a good time to send a note around to remind if you need access to a cool place, the library, just like we would do in a power mm -hmm. situation. Absolutely. We could do a social good. media post on it. And then yeah. you mentioned something that businesses, and I'm probably new to that, but I never think about it. I have a business, you know, would, I would imagine no one knows. Yeah. I don't know if we have a listing of, of those businesses, because how would you communicate with those people? They, they're not on your list if they don't know they could be a member. Right. But there might be one. Did you, did you have your meeting with the township? Because I could yet. ask. Not yet. Mine is this week, so I could have I could ask them if they have uh -huh. a list. Because like if, if, if my HR group sent a note out, you know, just hate to hate corporate, by the way, you all are eligible. Yeah. Everybody drives down Telegraph Road anyway, but I bet they never think about it. Yeah. When you say you're on the board, too. Poof. Yeah, about that. I know. They It'd all know, boy. In droves. Uh -huh. They all have to go vote. <laughs> oh, where is he? Where is he? <laughs> oh, I had that contested election. <laughs> we have in the past oh, done right, some right, marketing right, right. efforts toward businesses because mm -hmm. um, we can run lists using Reference USA, one of the databases that Laura Crayley um, shared with us. Um, and so we've sent out letters in the past, but we haven't done that in a while. Mm -hmm. So we could probably do that. I also was impressed by the Library of Things. Is there, do we have an intention to do, and we talked about our kits, which are fantastic, 
Have we thought about any, like doing more? We have thought about it and talked about it. Um, I'm wondering if maybe with our spaces project, if we might come up with a place to keep all those things mm -hmm. and um, do some efforts in that. I don't know if it pencils. If you break a guitar, that's more than $22. You know what I mean? And suddenly now that's going to be hard to replace. Right. And there's a lot There's a lot more to it. Yes. A sewing machine is really expensive. There's definitely by a the lot way. more to it. Yeah. yeah. Especially just in the organization or mm -hmm. how you take that forward. And what are we going to be known for in our library of things? What if, maybe it's household tools. Maybe it's seeds. Maybe mm -hmm. it's, it's endless. But exciting. Mm -hmm. Do you have to get a sewing expert or a power tool expert? That's part of the trick of those library of things mm -hmm. and maker spaces is it really needs a person who can right. champion it, knows it, understands it, a special person. I always think of uh, Baldwin, um, what's his name, Jack? Yeah, Jack. 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 Something with a J. Um, he's just like the perfect person for that role and um, it really needs that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, great. Uh, our, oh, sorry. Uh, go ahead. May, are we still in turn? Yeah, uh, yes, uh, if you uh, have other, other, this is your time. Well, this is the time to talk about the Friends. Um, another record June, another record month, I guess that's a better way to say it. Um, so in June, um, close to $6,000. Wow. Um, and a couple other changes that are going on with the Friends. Um, they've added a couple of folks to the board and made some changes there. I think we talked about that last month, actually. But <clears throat> they've also voted to change their monthly meetings to the third Wednesday of the month. Um, and that's also moved to 10.30 a.m. That's tomorrow. And that is tomorrow. I will be there. Thank you very much. Um, and they're expecting you. Uh, so thank you. Um, the other thing that I think uh, was really nice about uh, their accessibility in some respects is that they've changed their minimum for credit card payments because they felt like that was a barrier for folks that wanted to buy didn't have cash, and so I think there's no minimum is yeah. what they decided, finally decided so, yeah. um, so you could, I guess, buy a dollar book with a credit card. Mm -hmm. So just some things that they're doing to make sure that the public is happy yeah. and well taken care of. Kudos. Thank That's you. It. Thank you. Thank you for sharing that. Mm -hmm. Um, if there is no other other, <laughs> then I'll um, just remind everybody that our next scheduled meeting will be Tuesday, July 16th. This year, no. And we'll have the um, annual report. Uh -huh. And um, don't we have an RFP? Oh, the printer RFP, staff printer RFP to oh. discuss. Oh, yeah. Oh, exciting. exciting. So exciting. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so uh, I suppose that's that's about it for tonight. So thank, thank you, you all, and we can adjourn our meeting. Yes, congratulations.